Attitude is key how to create success through a positive mental attitude. Written and published by MSE Boost. Have you ever been warned that your negative attitude would spread to others? Or have you ever experienced someone's positive attitude lifting up your spirits and making you feel better? Attitude is the mood in which you project outwards to the world. It's your mental and emotional feelings towards something or someone. If you have a negative attitude, you are typically behaving aggressively without cooperation. In a positive attitude, you behave the opposite. Attitude is a crucial part of how you communicate with others. It's also crucial to achieving success. With the right attitude and keeping the right mindset, you can achieve anything that you set your mind to. How you feel about the work you are doing and the goals you want to achieve is just as important as your attitude in your communication. Achieving true success requires you to check your attitude while focusing on your goals. Having a negative attitude towards your goals, saying, there's no way that I can do this, or I might as well just give up, will hinder your progress greatly. A positive and determined mindset or attitude is the best way to make sure you are on the path to achieving everything you want to achieve. We understand that having the right kind of attitude can be difficult to achieve. It may take time to understand what kind of attitude you should have to complete your goals and make the big changes in your life. The most successful people out there are those with a strong and good attitude, one that matches the work they are doing and helps them achieve what they desire. In the upcoming chapters, we will talk about how to find the attitude that will help you achieve your goals. We will talk about the different kinds of attitudes you can have that are helpful to your career. Of course, we will also talk more in depth about why having certain attitudes is a huge tool for your professional success. Again, the way you see the world around you is your more powerful tool for getting what you want. Let's take a look at why that is. Chapter 1 Understanding Why Attitude Impacts Emotions and Behaviors Attitude is the collection of emotions and feelings towards a subject matter. If you walk into a meeting thinking that you can't stand the people in the room, and all you want to do is to go home, that would be walking into your meeting with a negative attitude. What's important to understand about attitudes is how they are contagious. People with positive attitudes have been known to light up a room, whereas those with negative attitudes drag everyone down with them. This is because we rely on the people we are around much more than we think we do. The people around you will influence how you think and act, which can be both very good or very negative. Not only do your emotions make up your attitude, but your attitude contributes to your emotions and behaviors. If you have ever gotten into a cycle where your emotions and attitude feed off of each other, the impact that attitude has on how you feel is responsible. Many people believe that it is primarily our attitudes that drive our behavior. However, just as we talked about the impact of attitude on emotions, there is more to it than how you feel is how you will act. Doing something based on your attitude can reinforce how you are feeling, once again leading into a cycle. There are three main components to the impact of our attitude on our minds, including the affective component, the behavioral component, and the cognitive component. Let's discuss each aspect and how each is used to lead to the behaviors and thought processes that we have. The affective component of your attitude refers to your thoughts. If you have a fear of failure, the effective component of your attitude may look like you thinking, I don't want to fail, or I don't want to look like a failure around all of my co-workers. Knowing your effective component is the easiest part of understanding your attitude towards something. This is the surface layer of your attitude. Oftentimes, what you are thinking is your first reaction to a situation. It is your first thoughts when something happens or is what you are thinking when you first meet someone. With the effective component of your attitude being at the surface level, it is also the easiest aspect of your attitude to change and make more positive. We will come back to your thinking patterns several times throughout this book. Attitude consists of your behavior towards something. Having a negative attitude toward doing a task can look like you dragging your feet while you walk, slumping your shoulders, or it can look like you avoiding doing a task because it makes you nervous or procrastinating. Your behavior is how you present your attitude to the rest of the world. More than your words, 
people will notice how you act while you are doing different tasks. That is why those who are successful have specific behavior that makes them look confident and that they know what is going on. You are more likely to feed off of someone else's attitude based on their behavior rather than what they are thinking. While you can never know for sure what someone is feeling, you can always see how what is happening in their mind is reflected in the way they behave. Finally, there are your feelings and emotions about a topic. This is different from the effective component. As with your cognitive thinking, you are feeling your attitude and how that impacts your perception of a task. In other words, these are the combination of your emotions and subconscious beliefs. While understanding your emotions is relatively simple, learning the subconscious reasons why you think and act the way you do can be much more difficult to pinpoint and therefore harder to understand. Let's go back to the example of having a fear of failure. While your effective component would look like you think, I don't want to fail, your cognitive component would look like, if I fail, I believe that everyone I know would hate me. These are your beliefs about a topic that feeds into your attitude, as this is how you will react to different negative situations that you may find yourself in. The cognitive component is on the deepest level of what impacts your attitude. While it's the hardest to understand, it is also the most important to rewire so that you can develop a more positive mindset. As we further on in the ways to cultivate a positive mindset, each of the methods and tips that we will give will have the ultimate goal of altering the cognitive components of your attitude. How do these components come together? The ABC approach to your attitude serves as the foundation of your actions and the way you move forward. The effective and cognitive components impact the way your mind works whereas the behavioral component impacts how you act. Your actions are based on how you think and feel, which then either reinforce or change the attitudes you have. It's important to understand your attitude, even if you aren't looking to use it to achieve your goals. Being stuck in unhealthy ways of thinking will lead to a lower quality of life compared to those who have worked on cultivating a healthy and happy mind through the following methods. Chapter 2 Developing and Cultivating Positive Mental Attitude A negative attitude does not lead to success. Thinking negative thoughts about failure, self-worth, and your skills will only lead to those thoughts manifesting themselves into reality. When you already have a negative mindset, you will unintentionally feed into your fears. Being so afraid that you are going to fail will already set your mind up for failure, which will then reinforce your fear of failure. See how that can become a terrible cycle to be stuck in. By developing a positive attitude, you start putting positive thoughts out into the world. What do those thoughts lead to? Positive emotions. Those positive emotions will then lead to actions that have been well thought out. When you think positively and work to change your beliefs to more positive ones, you are much more likely to take steps to obtain your goals. Your mind is powerful. It will take your mindset and make it the tool to your reality. Having a positive mindset gives you the best tool to your success. In a way, it's like having a living and breathing vision board in your mind. It's okay if you don't know where to start with developing a positive mental attitude. It's also okay if your mindset doesn't completely change right away. We want to give you the tools to begin shifting your thought process to a more positive one through the following steps. Self-talk is a strong tool to change the way you think, and therefore, develop a positive attitude. Have you ever said something as a joke so often that you began to truly believe it? This is what positive self-talk can do for you. Here is what not to do. Never get into a cycle where you think negative and harmful thoughts about yourself. Don't call yourself dumb, don't think that you are less than others, and don't tell yourself that what you do is pointless. If you say those things to yourself, you are going to believe them and limit your potential. If you think that you won't achieve anything great, why bother trying? That's what harmful self-talk can do. Instead, we want you to think good things about yourself. Tell yourself that you are smart and capable. Use self-talk to think that you can achieve big things and that you will achieve those things. Don't use words such as maybe, might, or possibly. Those limit your potential and don't give you a clear outcome. Instead, use words such as will, can, and must. 
saying that you might be able to achieve your goal is much different than saying that you will achieve your goal. Along with telling yourself that you can achieve success and will complete all the goals that you have, remember that with your self-talk, you should be compassionate. Things won't be amazing every second of the day. You will occasionally experience setbacks and make mistakes. In these situations, it can be really easy to fall into negative self-talk and wish that things were different. The trick here is being kind to yourself. Even if you make a mistake, take the lesson that the mistake is offering and remind yourself that you learned something from the situation. This will keep you moving forward on the path to success. We understand. So many people talk about being mindful and practicing meditation and how it is incredibly beneficial for achieving a better attitude and finding success. What people often forget to talk about is how to do those things and what you can do to practice mindfulness. People have made mindfulness out to be some complicated thinking pattern that is super difficult to do. Actually, mindfulness is a lot easier than you may think. In its simplest terms, mindfulness is the state of being aware. Take a moment from reading. Look around your space and find three things that have the color red on them. Then, find three things that have the color green on them. Okay, think about the shoes or the lack of shoes you are wearing. Can you feel the ground underneath your feet? Are your shoes too tight? Too big? Just right. Now, following those questions may have felt a little silly. However, after completing that exercise, you have successfully practiced being mindful. You become aware of your surroundings and your body. Mediation is the act of using mindfulness to train your attention to a single point. This is often done to achieve calmness and clarity. How do mindfulness and meditation lead to attitude improvement? When you are worked up in a frenzy, do you normally feel calm and collected or frustrated and stressed out? Right frustrated and stressed out are the feelings people often experience when doing difficult work for a while or have had long days. These negative feelings bleed into having a negative attitude, which can make other people feel negative and hurt your productivity. To remedy those feelings, practicing mindfulness and meditation helps calm you down. Figure out what you need in that current moment. Do you need a break, snack, water, nap, etc.? And gives you a chance to practice the self-talk we mentioned earlier. Meditation involves taking a moment, staying still, and being aware of how your body is feeling. Go from head to toe and take inventory of how you are feeling physically and emotionally. Allow those discoveries to help you make a plan for how to feel better. Sometimes all you need is a snack, but without mindfulness, you may have missed those cues. Finally, it's always important to appreciate what you already have. Mindfulness is awareness of yourself, whereas gratitude is awareness of everything you already have. When you appreciate what you already have, you feel more content in the here and now. You aren't so worried and panicked about making fast progress and always wanting more. While it's good to strive for bigger and better things, it's still important to appreciate everything that has gotten you to where you are. Studies have proven time and time again that practicing being grateful and appreciating what you have will make you a happier person. It boosts your mental attitude and gives you a more positive mindset. With a positive mindset, you can set yourself on the path to achieving success in any way that means to you. Gratitude boosts enthusiasm and loyalty, making it a lot easier to be productive. In fact, it has been shown throughout studies that gratitude alone leads to increased levels of success. How do you show gratitude? This can be done with mindfulness. In a notebook or in your head, Take a moment each and every day and jot down one to three things that you are glad that you already have. This can be as simple as the coffee you drank this morning, or even your family. Showing gratitude increases your self-awareness and gives you an opportunity to promote positivity in your day. Chapter 3 Overcoming Negative Thoughts and Beliefs If you have been used to negative patterns of thinking and beliefs, we understand that it will take time and effort to change your way of thinking into a more positive one. Don't expect to have a completely new mindset overnight. Overcoming your negative thoughts and beliefs can take years for some people to fully achieve. We will give you several methods to combat and overcome your negative thoughts. 
You can use several of these methods at once, as each of these methods are highly beneficial to overcoming your negative thoughts and beliefs. When we get worked up in a cycle of negative thinking, it is incredibly easy to have one negative thought after another. This leads us to have many negative thoughts that reinforce negative beliefs we may have about ourselves. A cycle like this because a habit is tough to break. However, a way to begin breaking this cycle is by slowing down and paying more attention to the thoughts you are having. This can be done by writing down your negative thoughts. In a journal or on an online document, write down the negative thoughts that you have as you experience them. If you are feeling stressed or frustrated, you will probably have a list to write down, and that is okay. Writing down your thoughts allows you to identify them. By identifying them, you become more aware of patterns in your thinking and what might be leading to certain thoughts you have. This leads us to our next methods. Yep, we are back to talking about mindfulness again. After you have learned how to identify your negative thinking by writing your negative thoughts down, you can now practice mindfulness by being extra aware whenever these thoughts come up. Mindfulness allows you to think through your feelings before you act upon them. When you experience a burst of negative thinking, for example anxiety, take a moment and sit with those emotions. What are you thinking? What events have led to you feeling this way? Now, instead of participating in actions and behaviors that you know won't make you feel any better, you can learn what you need at that moment and can provide for yourself in that sense. You can choose the actions that are the most beneficial and make rational decisions. Positive self-talk goes hand in hand with being mindful. This is an extra step that would be beneficial to take when you are being mindful while experiencing negative thoughts and beliefs. Let's say that you are feeling a sudden burst of anxiety right before having to do a business presentation at your next meeting. When you feel this anxiety, we encourage you to slow down and become mindful. How is anxiety impacting your body? What specifically about the presentation is inducing anxiety? How can you go about the next period of time while managing the anxiety that you feel? Then, once you start becoming more aware of your thought processes, you can incorporate positive self-talk into your mindfulness process. In the same situation, you can begin telling yourself that you will do great during your presentation and that everything will be well. However, what is just as important as self-talk during moments of intense negative feelings and thoughts is your self-talk after the situation. Telling yourself that everything will be fine before an event is only half of the work. Yes, it does help immensely, but it is not 100%. This is why we want you to practice positive self-talk after the situation as well. When you are done with the business meeting and can relax, make sure to tell yourself that you did a good job. In this situation in particular, it is common for people to look back on what they said and criticize themselves. This counts as negative self-talk that leads to a more negative attitude. After an intense moment, let yourself know that you did a good job and you faced a tough situation. Doing this over and over again will eventually lead you to rework your mindset, so you don't have those moments of intense emotions to begin with. You now can identify your negative thoughts and beliefs, write them down, be mindful while those thoughts come up, and practice positive self-talk. Now it's time to bring it all together and replace or work your negative thoughts and beliefs. This is the biggest part of overcoming your negative thoughts and beliefs and making them into more beneficial thoughts. Start with the thoughts you have written down. Go one by one through the list paragraph, or however you choose to express your emotions. With each negative thought you see, rewrite the thought into a more positive way of thinking. Here are a few examples. I am a failure. I continue to try even when I don't succeed. I can't complete this project. I currently don't have the tools to complete a project, but I am working to obtain those tools by asking for help. Everyone at the office hates me. I can't assume how people feel about me but I know that I do have friends in the office or people that care about me. As you can see, all negative thoughts can be reworked into a more positive, or at least more constructive way of thinking. Do this for each thought you have written down. This will help you practice reworking thoughts. At some point, 
you will get good enough at reworking the thoughts you have written down that you can rework any negative thoughts you have as they pop up. When you think of a negative thought, skip the step of writing it down and go straight into reworking it. What this process does is train your brain to think more positively. You don't give those negative thoughts any time of day before you rework them into more positive ones. Eventually, over time, you will experience these negative thought patterns less and less. Instead, those positive thoughts you have made through reworking negative thoughts will have more strength in your mind. Your brain will automatically think positive thoughts instead of negative ones. Once you have reached this point, you will have overcome many of your negative thoughts and beliefs. It is impossible to make it so that you will never have a negative thought again. But these are the tools to aid you when you are experiencing waves of negative thinking. Chapter 4 Fostering a Growth Mindset Growth mindset has become a popular term brought up in self-help books and in many TED Talks. If you don't know what a growth mindset is, it is a lot like how we described reworking your negative thoughts into positive thoughts. A growth mindset is a way of thinking where you take challenges and setbacks and turn them into positive growing moments. Instead of getting caught in a setback that you have experienced, you consider what you have learned from the situation and think about how you can turn the situation into one that is beneficial. Another way of thinking about having a growth mindset is not letting your limitations get the best of you. For some people, they may get stuck on a limitation that they have. For example, one might have the thought, I will never get this job, there's no way I have the skills for it. However, this does not follow what a growth mindset is. Someone with a growth mindset would instead think, I'm going to try to get this job. Even if I don't have the skills now, I know that I can learn them as I train for the job. If you don't have a growth mindset, it is the perfect time to develop one. Having a growth mindset gives you a more productive and overall a better attitude. Those who have a growth mindset are more likely to achieve success, as they are more likely to continue striving for bigger and better things instead of feeling stuck where they currently are. Let's get into the ways to develop a growth mindset so you can take any challenge and make it a growing opportunity. The largest aspect of a growth mindset is how one views failure. Those who have a growth mindset don't see failure as a purely bad thing. They won't completely stop a project if they've failed at a part of it, and they won't give up after a negative experience. What does failure mean to you now? Does it mean that you couldn't do a task that you wanted to? Does it mean that you lack the skills to achieve one of your goals? Does it mean making mistakes? All of these things can be seen as a failure, but with a growth mindset, Failure isn't a dead end. In a growth mindset, failure is always a chance to grow. Take the opportunity and learn a lesson from it. Did you make a mistake at your job? You now know how to properly handle the situation to avoid making that mistake again. When you experience failure because everyone experiences failure, keep pushing forward and take with you the new knowledge you have gained. When striving for success, it can be easy to push past your limits to try to achieve all the things you want. This can backfire if you continuously push past your limits. Instead of achieving big things, you may burn yourself out and make more mistakes. Know your limits with your skills and what you know you can achieve. By knowing your limits, you can set realistic goals for yourself. When you set realistic goals, you know that you can achieve them. Then, when you do achieve those goals, you can set ones that are slightly above the ones you've achieved. This pattern allows you to grow and better your skills. Do what you know you can do and slowly push your skills more and more. You will get better and eventually, you will achieve the large goals you've had. Brain plasticity is the word we partially described with the last method of cultivating a growth mindset. This term is essential for understanding the growth mindset and incorporating it into your way of thinking. Brain plasticity is the way that your brain continuously grows and changes as you learn new things and have different ways of thinking. It's your brain's ability to rewire itself as it takes and stores new information. When you are practicing mindfulness and overcoming your negative thoughts and behaviors, you are changing the way your brain works. It rewires itself to think with a more positive attitude. 
Then, as you learn new skills, the brain works to store that additional information. To fully incorporate a growth mindset, know that you can change how your brain works at any time. While these changes will take time to set in your brain, working to change the way you think, you will rewire your brain to take on that new way of thinking. This is beneficial to creating the best attitude possible. Even if you currently don't have a good attitude and mindset, you know that you can change how your brain works to have a better attitude. We used reflection when talking about writing down your negative thoughts and then reworking them to be more positive. This reflection can also be done by developing a growth mindset. Take some time each day to reflect on what you've achieved and what you failed at. Remember, when we say failure, we don't mean that as a negative thing. You may have failed this time, but you can always try again. Write down the lessons you've learned from the failures you experienced. Make sure to detail how you can use these lessons as an opportunity for future growth. When you take some time to reflect on what you've learned, you can then apply those to your future projects and endeavors. That way, you never reach a brick wall in your thinking. There are always new ways to grow. With a fixed mindset, you would want to reward your traits. You would celebrate that you are punctual, that you are organized, or that you are confident. While this is still important to do it's always good to celebrate yourself, this doesn't lead to growth and development. When you reward your actions, you encourage positive behaviors and help yourself complete more positive behaviors in the future. Taking it back to positive self-talk and reworking negative thoughts, you can reward yourself after each time you successfully rework a harmful thought. This helps you continue to rework thoughts in the future as you are being positively in both aspects reinforced. In the work setting, let's say that you have a hard time completing projects on time. Start giving yourself rewards for turning in a project on time. You can make the reward bigger for completing the project earlier. You are then rewarding positive behavior that encourages you to be more productive and do better work. Use the word yet. Growth mindset is all about growing and changing. The words you use can limit yourself and prevent growth and change. We understand that you won't automatically be able to do it all. There is always something to learn and ways to improve. If you can't do something, don't just say that you can't do it. Instead, say that you can't do it. Yet, by using the word yet, you leave the end of your statement open-ended. Sure, you may not be at the place you want to right now, but you can still get there. For example, let's say that you are not a fast typer and aren't reaching the minimum WPM for your job. Instead of saying, I can't type fast, which would limit your beliefs and discourage you from making improvements, say, I can't type fast yet. Now, you have opened up your future to developing your typing skills and getting better. When you say yet, that means you will make it to your goal in the future. Chapter 5 Practicing Mindfulness and Self-Care Practicing mindfulness is more than just working to be more productive in the workplace and to achieve success. It is also a crucial aspect of self-care, which oftentimes gets overlooked on the path to success. Working non-stop to achieve your goals may work for a little bit, but it is not sustainable long-term. Many people get burnt out while trying to achieve their goals because they don't give themselves the proper breaks and lack self-care in their everyday routines. Mindfulness is a large part of self-care as it allows you to look within yourself and learn what you need at a given moment. It allows you to access your emotions, why you are having those emotions, and what you can do about them. Much of this was talked about previously. Self-care and mindfulness are both important on their own but in many aspects, they go hand in hand. Let's dive into mindfulness and self-care so that you can practice it in your everyday life and use these tools to find success. What is self-care? When you think of self-care, do you think of facial masks and bubble baths? This is the common image that we commonly associate with self-care and view as moments of luxury. However, while practicing skincare and taking baths is fun, there is much more that goes into self-care. So, what is self-care? In general, self-care is all about cultivating behaviors and habits that ultimately lead to balance and well-being in one's life. 
It includes habits to keep yourself healthy and behaviors to achieve your highest level of well-being. Baths and skincare can fall under self-care for the physical self, and mindfulness falls under self-care for the mental self. Why is self-care important? Again, self-care is all about achieving balance in one's life and establishing well-being. Without balance, you won't have your ultimate well-being. Therefore, having self-care practices that include achieving balance are incredibly important. Self-care aims to achieve your highest potential on several different totems. There are physical health, mental health, emotional health, social health, professional health, spiritual health, financial health, and environmental health. If even just one of these totems is low, you won't be at your greatest potential. Without self-care, you will burn out. This then leads to lower productivity and inability to achieve your goals, along with lots of harm to your physical and mental health. With the many harmful outcomes that can come from neglecting self-care, know that you should incorporate self-care into your life. Self-care doesn't need to be fancy. Sometimes, it's simply sitting down to eat your dinner without your phone or laptop nearby. It's taking an hour to yourself each night before going to bed. It can also include practicing mindfulness in your everyday routine. Mindfulness is a key part of your mental and emotional self-care. Instead of allowing yourself to stew in negative emotions and thought patterns, unable to pick yourself up and find ways to feel better, Mindfulness helps you figure out what you need at any given moment. As a reminder, mindfulness is the practice of being aware of your surroundings, thoughts, and feelings. It's looking inwards and analyzing everything that is going on in your mind and body. You can use mindfulness as a part of your habit, or you can use it throughout the day as needed. To use mindfulness in your routine, establish a time for yourself every day to simply be aware. The best times to do this are in the morning, at your busiest time of day, and at night. Yes, we encourage you to build in time to practice mindfulness at your busiest point of the day. This is usually when you need it the most. Now, either in your mind or by writing it down, slow yourself down and analyze your body. Go from head to toe and think about spots on your body that are achy, tight, sore, or are having negative thoughts. Are you hungry, thirsty, or tired? Are you frustrated or stressed out? As you identify these feelings, write them down or make a mental note. Then analyze your thoughts. Are you thinking poorly about yourself and practicing negative self-talk? Did something someone say to you earlier stick in your mind? Take note of these two. Once you have these noted down, think about what you could do to solve the problem at hand. Is it time to go get a snack or a drink of water? Do you need to write down your negative thoughts and rework them into positive ones? Take time to do what you need so you can feel better. Scheduling time to be mindful will make being mindful throughout the day much easier to do. Speaking of which, let's discuss how to be mindful throughout the day. This can be difficult to do when you are feeling a lot of negative emotions at once. But by incorporating mindfulness, those negative emotions will become easier to handle. Self-care is being mindful in the moments you need it, and the moments you don't. When you are feeling off in some way and aren't sure of what the cause is, stop. Pause what you are doing and take inventory of your mind and body. Do the body scan we mentioned earlier and locate where the tension or bad emotions are. Consider what is causing you to think this way. It can be something physical like needing food or rest. It can be social such as wanting to talk to another person or having had a bad conversation with someone. Consider the environment, like too much or too little light in your office. Or it can be from one of the other self-care totems we talked about. Once you identify what the problem is and what has caused it, consider what solutions you have and choose the one that would be the most beneficial. Even after all that was mentioned above, there are many benefits to mindfulness that have yet to be talked about. Mindfulness increases patience. The act of pausing to assess how you are feeling in your body forces you to slow down and take time to come up with solutions. This ends up increasing your patience with yourself and with doing different tasks. Mindfulness increases trust. When you take time to learn what your mind and body need, you begin to trust yourself more to know what is wrong 
and what you can do to help. You learn to trust your emotions and understand that you can help yourself feel better. Mindfulness helps your ability to let go. When you are experiencing negative emotions, they aren't always easy to let go of so you can move on. However, with more experience with mindfulness, you will learn to move past negative moments and thought patterns, giving you more mental space to think in more positive and productive ways. Mindfulness is essential for your self-care as it teaches you to put your health first, whether that's mental or physical health. Each totem of your self-care will be improved through mindfulness as it forces you to pay more attention to what you need from each totem. Chapter 6 Maintaining Positive Mental Attitude in Daily Life This is easier said than done. Maintaining a positive mental attitude in your daily life will make you a more likable, positive, and productive person. However, to get to this point, you will need to put everything we have talked about into practice. Maintaining a positive mental attitude includes practicing mindfulness, positive self-talk, practicing self-care, and a lot more. This requires lots of hard work and patience. Having a positive mental attitude doesn't just mean ignoring the negativity and challenges that occur throughout the day. There is no way to completely get around life's challenges, no matter how happy and positive you are. Instead, maintaining a positive mental attitude involves approaching the challenges and less fortunate parts of life with a clear and open mind. It's taking those negative situations and finding the good out of them or finding the lessons out of them. Now, what does that sound like? This pattern of behavior and thinking relates back to the growth mindset we discussed earlier. It also relates to positive self-talk and having mindfulness throughout tough situations. Practicing habits that are connected to mindfulness and the growth mindset will make you a more well-rounded and positive person. However, there are more aspects to maintaining a positive mental mindset daily that we will discuss. After this section, you will have a better understanding of practicing a positive mindset each and every day in ways that are less challenging than you may expect. While discussing positivity, it may seem weird to mention fear. Feeling afraid isn't positive, right? Well, as we said before, maintaining a positive mindset is also about facing the challenges of the day in ways that benefit your future self. One fantastic way to practice a positive mindset is to follow your fears. Doing so gives you a chance to practice having a growth mindset by finding all the ways you can learn and grow from the situation. It gives you a chance to become mindful to sift through your thoughts and fears to discover why a situation makes you fearful. Finally, it gives you the opportunity to practice positive self-talk by encouraging yourself before, during, and after the situation. Following your fears is exactly how it sounds. If something is making you feel afraid or anxious, such as talking to a certain person or asking your boss for a promotion, you should do the thing that is making you afraid. When you do the things that you are afraid of, you train yourself to not be afraid of those things anymore. You may surprise yourself by discovering how easy a task may have been. Following your fears makes you more resilient and courageous. By following some of your fears, it will make it easier to follow other fears. Then, as you conquer more and more of your fears, there will be more room for positivity. Positive self-talk while doing something that makes you afraid helps train you to no longer be afraid of the situation you are putting yourself in. Maintain a positive mindset by following, and then conquering, what makes you afraid. Having a positive mindset on the daily is all about optimism. Finding the positive side to every situation broadens your perspective and forces you to find positive outcomes to life's challenges. Optimism sounds a lot like the growth mindset, right? To be more optimistic, you take the negative parts of life and reframe them into positive outcomes and lessons. It's finding the good within the bad. If you can find good in the toughest of situations, then it becomes a lot easier to remain positive and level-headed when something bad happens. Gratitude has been discussed before as it is super important to maintain a positive attitude. It is very easy to practice gratitude, and you can make a five-minute habit out of it. If you have five minutes of your day to spare, spend it being grateful for what you have. Practice gratitude easily by using a journal. Each morning, night, 
or any time of day that you want to develop the habit. Write down something you are grateful for in your journal. If you are having a difficult time thinking of things you are grateful for, consider the following. Family. Friends. Education. Possession. An event that took place during the day an interaction that took place in the day an opportunity. A tasty meal. Being grateful can include big things like being grateful for the people in your life or being grateful to have an opportunity to do something you are dreaming of. On the other hand, being grateful can include the tiny things like receiving a compliment from a stranger on your hair or that your coffee was especially good today. You can be grateful for anything in your life. And by writing those things down, you practice finding positivity every single day. Even on the days when nothing seems to go well, practicing gratitude will help you find something good from the day. Then, it becomes so much easier to find positivity within the day outside of your gratitude habit. With gratitude comes positivity. By practicing gratitude every day, you practice having a positive mindset every day. We have talked so much about finding positivity in our own lives and within ourselves. But what about sharing that positivity with other people? Attitudes are contagious. You can light up a room with a smile or darken it with a grumpy attitude. By choosing to share kindness with other people, you spread positivity. That shared positivity will lift other people's spirits which in turn will lift up yours. When you lift up other people's spirits and make them more positive, this can create a cycle of positivity where you will feel better and happier by making other people feel good. Being kind to others doesn't have to take that much work out of your day. It can be a compliment towards another person or picking up that item they dropped. When you are at a social event, make pleasant conversations with not just the outgoing people, but also with the shy and more reserved people. You never know if another person may be struggling to break out of their shell and interact more with others, and you could help them. By being kind to others, you can end up with so many more friends in your life. What's better than that? The sad truth about cultivating a positive mindset is that while you are doing so much work to find positivity each day and putting more focus on the positive aspects of life, not everyone is doing the same. Instead, you will certainly come across people who only want to practice a negative mindset. When experiencing disagreements with other people, you might find yourself in a situation where negative things have been said. Now, while you can't control how other people treat you, and you certainly can't control their emotions, you can control how you respond to those events. Instead of reacting negatively to something someone has said, don't hold a grudge and let it go. Sometimes the other person said it out of the heat of the moment, if they were having a bad day or were just told negative news. Now, it is okay to have an emotional reaction to these events. We aren't saying that you can't feel angry, sad, or even hurt. But these comments, your emotions are valid, and if someone said anything that was especially problematic to you, then that should be addressed and communicated upon. However, for the smaller things, it does you a bigger favor to let things go and not take them personally. Don't let other people's negativity drag you down. Letting other people's comments get you chips away at your positivity. When you don't take things personally, you have more room for positive thinking and having a growth mindset. Creating a community of those who strive to cultivate a positive mindset makes it much easier for you to cultivate a positive mindset. The people who only focus on the negative and always have a bad attitude drag others down and spread their negativity. By taking yourself away from those people and surrounding yourself with other positive people, you create a healthier environment with others who have the same values as you. The people close in your life have a huge impact on your way of thinking and your mindset. Instead of surrounding yourself with people who only want to bring you and or themselves down, Surround yourself with those who want to continue growing and reaching for the sky's limit. To achieve success, one may think about working hard. They may consider staying up late at night and getting little sleep. They may consider skipping breakfast to spend more time at the office. Or they may even consider fighting their way to the top, no matter what it takes. While some people have achieved success with those previous methods, there is a much better and healthier way to achieve success in your life. 
That is by having a positive attitude, which comprises a positive mindset, a growth mindset, and practicing mindfulness whenever you can. Why does having a positive attitude lead to success? When you have the mindset for success, you manifest that success coming to you faster. Good things come to those who think positively and find lessons with each challenge. A positive mindset leads to growth in so many ways. You become a more positive and healthier person by eliminating negative self-taught that may have been contributing to low self-esteem or self-image. A positive mindset leads to the growth and development of your skills because you find lessons with each challenge and follow your fears. When you follow your fears, you learn new things that can help you get the skills you need to achieve success. Having a growth mindset means that you will never give up no matter the setbacks. Your challenge is temporary, and if you can't do something, it's you can't do something yet. When you learn to never give up, you won't take an obstacle and let that prevent you from achieving your goals. Instead, you will try and try again until you gain the knowledge and experience needed to achieve what you want. Attitude is key because it keeps you on the path to fighting for your success. You won't back down or give up. There's no way you will allow other people to spread their negativity to you and stop you from achieving your dreams. Your mental health will improve through positive self-talk and reworking any negative thought patterns that you may have. Your attitude is the building block to a more positive and healthier person. It gives you the tools you need to discover and achieve success. Cultivating a positive and beneficial attitude won't happen overnight. Each step that we have given you will have its ups and downs. You will find some days much easier to stay positive during than others. There may be times that you want to give up and slip back into your old ways. Give yourself time to practice all the tools and tips we have given you. Patience is necessary to give your brain time to rewire itself into a more positive image. However, if you keep up with it and never give up, we know that you will cultivate the attitude you desire in due time. Don't rush your mind instead, just keep growing.